Well, most of the spillage um, has occurred in construction zones or in areas where our, our infrastructure has failed. And so our responsibility is first to main, make sure that our infrastructure is in good condition. We have um, neglected both sewers and water mains for a decade or so. We are on course to raise fees to afford to um, make, uh, to improve our maintenance on those facilities. Um, but it, it, we should be embarrassed that we're um, allowing that to happen. The second thing is that we should uh, have tighter supervision over construction sites where that sort of um, problem might arise. Um, so it's really an internal control problem and uh, a maintenance of our, our infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. Eaton. And Mr. Majer, the same question to you. What is the city's role and responsibility in ensuring these sewage spillages do not continue to occur? Sure, so a couple of, um, of the spills have been related to construction, uh, but there has actually been a larger issue uh, over the years uh, with sewage spills in that area. I'm actually someone who goes to the ARB uh, several times a week, uh, and you'll notice that smell along the river. Uh, that has to do with some outdated infrastructure and several areas uh, which have not been updated uh, and need to be updated. There's been some work that actually just finished uh, within the past week in the ARB uh, along the drive, which has fixed some of that. We need to address our infrastructure in the short term to prevent these things from happening. Uh, but also, we have to have a longer term view because we're going to see more flooding and we're going to see uh, more things related to climate change uh, that are going to impact our water systems. And so I think we have to take a long term approach, uh, maintaining and updating the infrastructure that's there right now that's been causing that, but also looking at what's coming down the road that we're going to need to address.